Welcome to my Webflow tutorial. If you've ever found yourself overwhelmed by the endless possibilities of Webflow, you're not alone. I'm here to help you navigate its powerful features with ease. By leveraging AI-powered tools and practical, actionable guidance, I'll help simplify the web design process so you can focus on bringing your ideas to life. By the end of this tutorial, you'll feel confident exploring Webflow's features and have what it takes to build a stunning website. Before we start with the tutorial, let me give you a quick intro to what Webflow is all about. From my experience, it's more like Photoshop or Figma rather than a traditional website builder like Hostinger. That said, Webflow is still a powerful no-code platform that empowers users to design, develop, and host websites visually. It stands out for its unique approach, offering unmatched design freedom while adhering to professional coding standards. This makes Webflow a good consideration for designers, developers, and businesses looking to create stunning, responsive websites efficiently. So if you're up for that, let's get this Webflow tutorial started. First, we'll need a Webflow account. On their website, click on Get Started, It's Free, enter your email, create a password, and follow the prompts to set up your account. Once you're in, you'll need to choose a plan that suits your needs. Yes, I know I just said it's free to get started, but if you're serious about using Webflow, you might want to consider premium options. The free plan is called Starter. It's great for exploring the platform, but has some serious limitations, like a Webflow.io domain and two-page cap. For simple static sites without much content, the basic plan is a practical choice that should be more than enough for beginners. However, if you're looking for full functionality, you should consider the CMS plan, especially if you're going for content-driven sites like blogs or portfolios, because it includes a robust content management system. But whichever premium plan you choose, you can save with my discount that you can get with this QR code or by clicking on the link in the description. After selecting a plan, log into your dashboard and start a new project by clicking New Project. There you'll have three options. Blank Site, if you want to begin from scratch, or Template, if you want to pick a design of your liking and go from there. But wait, I said three options, right? Well, Tutorial 1 is not for starting your new website. It just shows the very basics of how to begin if you choose Blank Site. It doesn't save your site after you're done with the tutorial, which is a bit weird. That said, it'll give you a nice primer on how to get things started. With that in mind, though, I'll choose the template option, which will allow me to select from over 6,000 templates if we count all the paid ones, too. You can find them all in the marketplace. But if you want a free one, there will be around 70 selections available in total. Quite a drop off, right? Well, that's not all. And since I want to use the AI assistant when building my site, my options will be limited to a grand total of eight templates. On the bright side, all of those are free. And before selecting your favorite one, you can preview it right here. Next, we have to name our site. If you're not sure what you want it to be, don't overthink it. You can always change it later. Once you click on Create Site, it will open up Webflow's Visual Designer, where you can start building your website. The drag and drop interface makes it easy to add and customize elements, such as text, images, and forms without any coding knowledge. However, there is plenty of customization, so if you're a beginner, you might get lost. There is a list of eight things you should do to get started with articles and videos to help you out. But to make things easier than that, let me explain how builders like this work. The first foundational principle of web design is to grasp the box model. Everything on a web page, whether it's text, images, or layouts, is essentially a series of nested boxes. These boxes include sections, containers, and div blocks, each playing a role in the overall structure. To understand how these elements are organized, use Webflow's Navigator, a hierarchy tool on the left side of the interface. The navigator usually represents the structure of your page, making it easier to navigate, rearrange, and style individual components. Once you have a basic understanding of the structure, it's time to add and style elements. Start by opening the Add Elements panel and dragging a nav bar onto your canvas. This will serve as the navigation menu for your site. To style it, select the class Nav Bar and use the style panel to adjust its colors, fonts, and spacing to your Webflow design preferences. Next, add a hero section directly below the navigation bar. The hero section is like a key area at the top of your site, often used to grab visitors' attention. To create it, include a grid within the section to organize the layout. Populate the grid with essential elements, a heading, paragraph, button, and an image. To incorporate images like logos or hero graphics, use the Asset Manager, where you can upload and manage your media files. As you build, it's important to pay attention to spacing. 
Use padding to adjust the space inside an element between its content and its border and margins to control the space outside the element, which is the gap between the element and the others around it. Understanding the difference between these two will help you create clean and well-organized designs. Now, we also want to make things consistent. In Webflow, CSS classes are key to creating consistent styles across your site. A class is a set of design rules, such as a font size, color, and spacing that you can apply to multiple elements. Once a class is created, any updates to its styles will automatically reflect on all elements using that class. To use CSS classes in Webflow, start by selecting an element you want to style. In the Style panel, type a descriptive name for your class, like Heading Primary, and press Enter to create it. Adjust the design properties such as font, color, or padding, and these styles will now be associated with the class. To maintain consistency, apply this class to other similar elements by typing the class name into the selector field. For example, you can create a class called Button Main to style buttons consistently, or Content Wrapper to standardize spacing for div blocks. By reusing these classes across your site, you ensure a cohesive design while saving time by avoiding repetitive styling. Webflow's visual interface makes it easy to manage and apply these reusable styles, simplifying your workflow and elevating your site's design. With these steps, you'll establish a solid foundation for your website and learn to effectively manage its layout and appearance. If that seems too difficult to grasp for now, Webflow AI is on your side to help simplify some of the web design processes. We can start by using Webflow's AI-generated layout suggestions. When creating a new page or section, the AI provides pre-designed layout options based on your project's needs. To try this, click on AI Layout Suggestions in the Design panel. Describe your goal, for instance, a hero section with a call to action, and let the AI generate a layout. Once it's ready, you can customize it to match your brand style. Enhance your site's visual appeal by asking Webflow's AI for design suggestions. In the Style panel, use the AI to recommend complementary color schemes, typography, combinations, or layout tweaks. For example, you can type, suggest a modern color palette, and apply the results directly to your design. Now for me, their most impressive AI tool is Localizations. To use it, navigate to the Localization section right here and enable AI-based translations for your content. This tool can generate multilingual versions of your site, adapting text and other elements for global audiences with minimal effort. That's about it for Webflow AI tools. Yeah, it's not the most extensive list, but it does help. Even if some features feel experimental, Webflow's AI functionalities are definitely usable and can save you hours of manual work while helping you achieve sleek professional design. Besides, the AI of serious providers is improving rapidly these days. And to me, it seems like Webflow is one of those. Now, your website might look good on your screen, but what about for others? Well, you can create a responsive website using Webflow. To do so, start by previewing your design for different screen sizes using the device icons in the designer. For tablet view, resize fonts in the style panel, adjust grid layouts to fit the small screen, and ensure images scale correctly by modifying their width settings. For mobile view, stack elements vertically, reduce spacing using padding and margins, and refine touch targets like buttons by increasing their size for better usability. Another thing to not forget is Webflow's app library for integrations like MailChimp for email marketing, Google Analytics for tracking, and Stripe or Shopify for e-commerce. There are around 240 different apps right now, and many of them are free. These apps can easily be added from Webflow's dashboard. Just press E or find it right here. Select the app you like and follow the guidelines of the app itself. So we're pretty much done with learning how to build a website with Webflow. Now what's left to do is publish the thing. Start by previewing the website to ensure everything looks and functions correctly. Use Webflow's preview feature. This allows you to navigate through all the pages, test interactive elements, and verify that your content is responsive across devices, including desktop, tablet, and mobile. If you like what you see, next you can live test your site. To do so, you can publish it to Webflow's free subdomain. Simply click the Publish button in the top right corner of the designer, select the Webflow subdomain, and click Publish to Selected Domains. This is an excellent way to test your site for internal reviews, client feedback, or testing before connecting a custom domain. When you're ready to go live on a custom domain, Webflow's hosting provides numerous benefits, including a 99.99% uptime to keep your site available around the clock, a global CDN that ensures fast loading times by serving content from the nearest server, 
and support from HTTP2 and HTTP3 protocols, which enhance speed, security, and efficiency. Webflow's hosting is powered by Amazon Web Services and Cloudflare, combining scalable infrastructure with robust security features. By the way, don't forget that you can save on Webflow with my discount from the link in the description, as all of their premium plans include hosting. Overall, Webflow is quite the good website builder with great design capabilities, but it does require more knowledge than traditional tools like Hostinger. While it can be good, the learning curve for newbies is pretty high. However, with this Webflow guide or the help of their Academy page, it can definitely be manageable. That'll be all in this how to use Webflow video, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe for more no-code website building content, just like this one on the screen. All right, thanks for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you soon.